Joe, at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, national and local leaders scrambled to make crucial life and death decisions about how to respond. And during that difficult time, the governor of Maine says letters from her constituents helped keep her grounded and connected to those she served. In May of 2020, like all Americans, Maine resident Ashira Knapp's life was upended by the pandemic. So the young mom began writing weekly letters to Governor Janet Mills, sharing her own personal story. And Governor Mills kept the letters along with a journal of her own experiences and her struggles, both personally and politically. So fast forward to 2021, when veteran reporter Shannon Mullen met with Governor Mills and learned about the letters in the journal. And she weaved them into a book called, in other words, Leadership how a young mother's weekly letters to her governor helped both women brave the first pandemic year. And author Shannon Mullen and Governor Janet Mills both join us now. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Shannon, uh, I gotta ask, how did you learn about the letters, the diary, and what made you think about weaving them together for this important book? I learned about the letters when I met the governor socially, and um, she had an emotional reaction to having received the final letter from Ashira. So I thought, I need to see what's in those letters. Um, and there were dozens of them, and they were full of civility and grace and wisdom and all the things I thought had either been drowned out of our national discourse or um, you know, weren't loud enough. So I asked her if she had written back, and she had about four times. That wasn't going to be enough for a book. So I wanted to know if she kept a journal, and she had since she was five. And so uh, she let me use some excerpts, excerpts from her journal during that time, and I wove them together to the book. So, um, you know, that's how we got here. And, uh, you know, I would say that the book has begun to make its way out into the world. Yeah, well, I, you know, I love you said something. You said a phrase that I just absolutely love, like the governor was doing the best that she could, right? There's this concept in DBT <laughs> where we're supposed to give other people the benefit of the doubt. And we get, when we get angry with them or frustrated with them, we go, all right, they're doing the best they can. Governor, talk about that when you're facing a pandemic that we hadn't seen in a century. I could, I could talk about how leaders, whether it's facing war or peace decisions, whether it, it, they're, they're, they're facing decisions of, of, of on, on pandemics or national security, they don't have all the information. Yeah. You just make the best decisions you can make at the time. Right. Right. There's, there was no playbook for this pandemic, no playbook for any governor, any public official that I'm aware of to deal with a pandemic. So what we did, what we tried to do was follow the science. And the best advice I got right at the beginning of this pandemic was tell the people the truth, whether it's good news, bad no news, or I don't know news, tell them what you know, and they will listen to you. And as a result, after 220 news briefings, press conferences, 90 something plus executive orders and um, many, many pro proclamations and whatnot, uh, after all of that, Maine, having the oldest population in the country, uh, nevertheless had one of the lowest death rates from COVID and one of the highest vaccination rates as well. I think those two facts are intertwined. So I'm proud of what the state of Maine did. We had one of the best economic recoveries and one of the best um, health care outcomes of all the states next to Hawaii. Hawaii just had to close their airport and, you know, we were not as nice. isolated as they, but we had decently good outcomes from the pandemic, but listening to the people and talking to the people every day and telling them the truth, whatever you knew at any time right. in, the, in the course of that pandemic. Well, and, and Governor, you just said something so important. You tell them what you knew and what you didn't know. It seems to me that the yeah. governors that did poorly were the ones that tried to act like they knew everything right off the bat. Either they were anti-mask, pro-mask, anti-vaccine, pro but it was used uh, for, for politics. I look at your example right. and the example of another New England governor, Ned Lamont, people who actually saw their approval ratings go yeah. up because you and Ned never claimed to know things you didn't know. You said, listen, I'm gonna tell you everything I know as I know <laughs> it, and we're gonna get through this together. Talk about how important it is sometimes for politicians to say, 
I don't know. Right. And, you know, I was in frequent communication with my fellow Republican, my Republican governors in neighboring states, Charlie Baker, Ned Lamont, and a Democrat, uh, Phil Scott in Vermont, and uh, Chris Sununu in New Hampshire. We all had to talk a lot, share what information we had, because honestly, the first year of the pandemic, we were basically on our own. We were told, you governors, it's, you're in charge of this. Do what you can, basically. And the buck was passed. But it was also so, more, so much more important to listen to people and to get their letters of concern and to hear from people like Ashira Knapp and what was going on in their daily lives. And I found that very grounding. She wrote me constantly about homeschooling her two young children, um, taking care of a disruptive dog, birthing a goat kid in the spring, and how she was handling the fi family finances and the small business that was run by her and her husband. That was really important for me to hear, too. It was important for me to hear from the mouths of children like a young Savannah in Bangor who said, who wrote to me handwritten letters. She said, Governor Mills, I hope this COVID thing doesn't isolate our hearts from one another. That was so important, yeah. too. And I wrote back and said, Savannah, we're not going to let this or any other thing isolate our hearts from one another because we are family. It was important to keep yeah. people involved and to communicate with people at all levels. You, you know, also very important, uh, Shannon, if I can add, uh, this is a governor who made a marathon of politically unpopular decisions and was reelected by a historic margin. I think that's a message worth amplifying yeah. um, to say nothing of how important it is to tell stories about the difference that an individual person can make. In Ashira's case, how much individual agency we all have in the face of so much uncertainty. The importance of letter writing, well, period. We've lost yeah. the art of letter writing, and these were all handwritten letters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Shannon, I wanted just as a backdrop of what you just said about all the unpopular decisions the governor made at the time that ended up being, you know, showing great foresight. And then she went, wins a big reelection. We just talk more about the book, but give us the backdrop about Maine, a state that Mika and I may know a thing or two about, may spend a day or two uh, in, in that, that wonderful state. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's a politically... It's a pretty divided state. This is this is this is not the Upper West Side. In fact, a lot of our friends that we talk about on the show are <laughs> no. Mainers who are still all in for Don, exactly. are all in for Donald Trump. So we're not talking about uh, this this ideological bubble. There are people that are still all in for Donald Trump. There are people that are still in mm -hmm. uh, solidly in the middle. There are people on the left. So. All of this happened amid a pretty contentious political backdrop, didn't it? Well, I would say, yes, Maine, I, I wouldn't necessarily call Maine divided. I think Maine, I'm more interested in the fact that this is a state that, with a long tradition of producing moderate politicians with an outsized influence in national politics, and I would say that this is one of them. Yeah, and Margaret her example... Smith, Olympia Snow, exactly. Bill Cohen, yep. Republicans who are moderate and leaders. And this is a great time for that example. And this oh, isn't it so much about the politics. Is. Some of it's in the. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't intend to write a book. I had no intention of writing a book. <laughs> and she came along, you know, after the pandemic ended, and said, "This makes a book." I said, "Really? Okay." And she did a great job researching uh, all the press conferences and all the uh, press clippings and everything we do, you know, weekly no, radio no, addresses. <laughs> nobody runs for governor thinking someday I'll shut down the state as Democrats and Republican governors did. Nobody runs for governor saying someday I'll ban parades, weddings, funerals, 4th of July picnics, close bars. Nobody wants to do that. And yet Republican and Democratic governors did it. And those who did it, frankly, were more successful in saving the lives of their people. All right. Well, so glad that you all have come together to write this book and, and, and tell this incredible story. The new book is called, in other words, Leadership, How a Young Mother's Weekly Letters to Governor Helped Both Women Brave the First Year, the First Pandemic Year. Governor Janet Mills, thank you so much. And author Shannon Mullen, thank you as well. Thank you. We greatly appreciate it.